Good morning, everyone. I'm Dave. Welcome back to the wee hours where I suffer from periodic bouts of insomnia and play games to pass the time. We are back with my 12-year-old self deeply enjoying Ian Livingston's fighting fantasy Forest of Doom. The last episode, we started our adventure and we are on a quest to reunite the two pieces of the fabled Dwarven Warhammer. And we met Yastromo, the master mage of these parts, and bought a bunch of magical items off him, hopefully ones that we need. Uh, but again, in case you missed the last episode, all decisions are final. We will not be digitally holding our finger in the pages. If I made a bad choice, I made a bad choice and we live with it. So with that, let's get stuck right into the forest of doom. Outside in the bright light, you notice the dead quietness again. A narrow path leads northwards from the tall grass surrounding Yastromo's tower into the dense undergrowth of Darkwood Forest. In a few strides, you are surrounded by the dark and tangled forest. Stones and knotted roots seem to hide in the shadows, and you can almost believe they are trying to trip you up. The light fades quickly and the air becomes moist and unpleasant. Deeper and deeper you go into the gloom. Eventually, the path forks on either side of a huge old tree. To go west or to go east? Well, six of one, half dozen of the other, I would say. So let's just go east. That seems fine. The narrow path continues to cut its way through the tangled forest. Strange animal cries and noises echo through the trees. At last, the path widens to approximately a meter across. Soon you arrive at a moss-covered wooden signpost, on top of which sits a large crow. The arms of the signpost read north and east. Just as you are deciding which way to continue, you hear the words, Good afternoon. You look up in the direction of the voice and see the crow looking down at you inquisitively. Good afternoon, you reply slowly, feeling a little foolish. The crow speaks again, asking which way you are headed. You reply that you are looking for two goblins, small, sinewy creatures with brown, scaly skin. One gold piece will buy my advice, states the crow confidently. Will we pay the crow for its advice? Will we ignore the crow and turn north? Or ignore the crow and carry on east? Well... I, got, I figure we've got a s chance that this is a complete scam. And that this crow is just going to fly off with my gold piece saying, ha ha ha, I got your gold piece. But I also got to figure that a crow is going to know the forest pretty intimately. So, and we've got some extra gold. We're not, we don't have no gold. So I'm going to go ahead and pay the crow for its advice. You put the gold piece on top of the signpost as requested by the crow, after which it says, go north. You ask the crow why it needs gold pieces, and it replies that it needs 30 gold pieces to pay a stromo to turn it back into a human again. Oh, that's, that's a justifiable thing to need money for. You bid the crow farewell. If you want to go north as advised by the crow, or do we want to go east? Well, I don't think the crow had any particular reason to send us on a wild goose chase. So let's go north, as the crow advised. Walking along the path, you hear footsteps and arguing voices ahead of you. Do we wish to meet the owners, or would we rather hide in the bushes and let them walk by? Given our stats, which are terrible, uh, we, our, our combat skills, we rolled some really low die on those. Uh, our, our dice rolls were just not good. So I'm going to try and want to avoid combat as much as possible. I am going to hide in the bushes and let them walk by whomever they are. As you crouch in the bushes off the path, the voices get louder. Two pairs of spindly legs in tattered cloth shuffle past you quickly, kicking up dirt and dust. The voices soon fade away into the distance. You step out onto the path again and press on northwards. Well, um, hopefully combat avoided. Hopefully that wasn't some you know deeply important plot piece that I missed. I hope I just avoided a fight that I probably wasn't going to win. So let's see. To the left of the path, you notice, notice a large hole in the ground with a diameter of some three meters. Walking over to the edge of the hole, you see it sloping off into the depths of the earth. Do we wish to walk down the hole, or are we going to keep going north? Let's see what's in the hole. As you descend into the hole, you notice large amounts of slime secreted by some huge creature. Do we wish to climb back out of the hole? Oh, absolutely we do. Absolutely we do. I in no way want to know what large creature is secreting slime, because that sounds like a fight I'm not going to win. It also sounds like a creature I'm probably not going to be able to reason with. So we are going to climb out of the hole and continue walking northwards. 
At last, the trees begin to thin out and shafts of sunlight beam down through the gaps on either side of the path. As the path widens, you see a large cave entrance at a few yards back on the right. Well, okay, hopefully we can back out of the cave like we did the hole. We can examine the cave or continue northwards. Let's just poke our noses in the cave. Oh, that doesn't look good. That that doesn't look good right there. And just wonderful that they used the original artwork and colorized it. It's just, it was so wonderful back then. It's still wonderful now. It's really, really great fantasy artwork. Slowly you peer into the cave and see the huge shape of an ogre walking slowly over to a wicker cage with a bowl of water in his great hand. He is dressed in animal furs and carries a stone club in his belt. There appears to be a small creature jumping around in the cage. We may pick up a rock and throw it at the ogre. I don't know if that sounds like a good idea. Rush in and attack the ogre, which sounds like a worse idea, or leave the cave. Well, this could go horribly wrong, but I got to feel that that creature in the cage is is probably one of the goblins that we're searching for. I mean, it, it, look, I mean, check it. It looks like a goblin. It clearly looks like a goblin. So let's see if we can maybe knock the the ogre out or something. We're going to pick up a rock and throw it at the ogre. That's not a sentence I usually utter in everyday conversation. If you possess gloves of missile dexterity, oh, I do. I absolutely do, Forest of Doom, because we bought those from Yastromo. So yes, I do. You reach into your backpack and pull out the purple silk glove. It fits snugly on your hand. You then bend down and pick up a good-sized rock and take aim. You throw the rock with all your might at the ogre, and it flies like an arrow to hit him on the side of the head, knocking him unconscious. The creature in the cage jumps around even more than before. Do we take a closer look at the creature in the cage? Do we search through the contents of the cave, or do we leave the cave immediately? I definitely want to search through the contents of the cave, but... I am concerned that the ogre is going to wake up and it's more important that we take a closer look at the creature in the cage. If he's going to wake up, I want to do this first. So let's take a look at the creature in the cage. Inside the cage, a small sinewy creature with brown scaly skin is jumping up and down. He is a goblin. I know because that's the description of goblins. Round his neck hangs a black shiny rod on a leather cord. Excellent. And we know that the, the, the handle of the hammer is ebony, so it makes sense that it is black. If you want to unlock the cage door, yes, we do. We do not want to leave the cave because I think we found one of the things we're looking for. You unlock the door and step back, drawing your sword in case the goblin tries to attack you. He picks up a wooden stool and waving it in the air, kicks the door open and charges at you, screaming, well, we must fight. Um, I don't have high hopes about this. I hope this is a really weak goblin because our combat stats are not really up to snuff, but we must fight him. So fight him, we will. Okay, he is pretty weak. We've got 16 stamina and 8 skill. He's got 4 stamina and 5 skill. So... Hopefully we're going to do okay here. Okay, I'm the white dice. Oh, nice. Double sixes right off the bat. Right off the bat. How about another one? Nine and a six. That's me again. Yes, it is. He's done. He's done. Now, in our defense, he was a horribly weak goblin. So let's not say we're the world's best fighters here. Uh, we did win. We did win. You bend down over the lifeless body of the mad goblin and examine the rod around its neck. The rod is made of ebony and there's a screw thread at one end. You are excited to see the letter G neatly inscribed at the other end of what must be the handle of the dwarfish warhammer. You put your find in your backpack and gain one luck point. If you wish to search the contents of the cave or are we going to leave and continue north? Well, the ogre isn't awake. So let's see if we can get a quick search done. There's not much of interest to be found in the cave. A straw bed, stone jars, a table, and chair are all that is immediately visible. But on a stone shelf above the bed, a small silver box catches your eye. Well, sure, yeah, absolutely. Let's open the silver box. Why does an ogre have something as nice as a silver box? Probably stole it. You gently prize the lid off the box, but as you do so, a yellow gas escapes and envelops your face if you possess nose filters. I knew nose filters were important. Knew it, knew it, knew it. Thank you, 12-year-old me, for remembering nose filters. That's the only thing I remember, but nose filters. I knew those were important. Apparently, I've made this mistake before. Yes, I do have nose filters. The gas is toxic and your eyes start to water. You hold your breath long enough to find the nose filters and slip them into place inside your nostrils. You inhale tentatively, but all is well. 
After a while, the gas cloud around your face fades away. You put the silver box into your backpack and leave the cave to continue your journey northwards. Walking along the path, you do not notice a rope noose hidden beneath some fallen leaves ahead of you. Your foot catches in the noose and suddenly you're hauled into the air by the rope, which is tied to a sprung tree. In a second, you are hanging upside down, suspended by your trapped foot. Okay, we've got a luck check, and that's not going to go well. Our luck is pretty bad. So if we make our luck check, then our, we keep our sword. If not, well, we'll find out what happens. Come on, lucky roll. Oh, that's not good. No, my luck has run out. I kind of saw that coming. Yeah, our, our stats are terrible. Absolutely terrible, but there it is. If you're unlucky, your sword slips from its scabbard and drops to the ground, leaving you dangling helplessly. You curse as you wonder who set this infernal trap. After ten minutes, you hear footsteps and begin to panic, making frantic swaying movements in the air, trying to free your foot from the noose. Then a small boy dressed in green leather shorts and a green shirt appears. He is chewing on what looks like a chicken bone. He walks underneath you, looks up and smiles, saying, Ha ha, somebody's caught in the ogre's tree trap. You ask him politely to pass you your sword. That will cost you five gold pieces. Or perhaps you have a nice magical item for me he says, eyes widening. You are in no position to argue and must give the boy the gold or one of your magical items. Okay. I have five gold. Actually, I think I have six because I gave, I had seven and I gave one to the crow. I'm not giving him any of my magic items. I just, we've already used two of them. We've already seen how important those items are. So I am not giving him any items. I guess I'm going to give him the gold hope I don't need to buy anything in the near future, but yeah, okay, we're gonna we're gonna be extorted by the chicken bone kid here. Yes, we've given him the gold. The small boy passes you your sword and runs down the path. Well, at least he did that. At least he didn't just take the gold and run. You cut the rope holding your foot and fall heavily to the ground. You get to your feet and brush the dirt from your clothes. North we go. You notice a knotted vine hanging down to the ground from a tree on your left. You look up and see a roughly made treehouse amid the branches. Do we want to climb the vine to the treehouse, or do we want to continue walking north? Well, the only reason the ogre cave worked out is because we had magical items. I gotta figure in a treehouse, somebody's living in the treehouse, and I'm, I'm gonna figure they probably want to murder me. That's that's just it's forest of doom. It's not forest of nice, happy, friendly people. So. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass on the treehouse. I think we're just going to keep walking north. Don't know if that's a good idea. Can't imagine. Just basic game logic tells me that we're not going to find the head of the hammer immediately after finding the rod of the hammer. So I feel the chances of it being up in that treehouse are pretty slim to none. I think I'm pretty confident with continuing north and avoiding the treehouse. Soon the path leads out of the trees onto the onto a large plain with tall grasses. Beyond it, you see rising ground and further off some low hills. The path splits and goes in three directions. We can go west, we can go east, or we can go north. And we will figure that out next time. This is where we'll leave it for here. We'll pick it up again. And we've got three ways to go through the forest of doom here. Until then, I'm Dave. Thank you, as always, for joining me in the wee hours. And we'll see you next time.